Good morning and welcome to today's Almost Daily Devotional. We continue in the book of Acts. We're on to chapter 13 now. And like I said yesterday, um, the story of Acts changes here in chapter 13. So up from verse 1, chapter 1, to verse, you know, the end of chapter 12, we have the story of the Jerusalem church of Peter and of James and John um, and all of the things that happened fairly locally to Jerusalem. In chapter 13, we start to see the gospel spread outside of the country of Israel. And that is done by two men called Barnabas and Paul. Um, he was still called Saul at this point in the Bible. Um, so the church met and agreed to send two people out on a missionary journey. And this is what they said. The church at Antioch included prophets and teachers. As they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul to the work I have called them to undertake. After the Holy Spirit sent them on their way, they went. They traveled through the, throughout the island until they arrived at Paphos. There was found there a certain man named Bar-Jesus, a Jew who was a false prophet and practiced sorcery. He practiced he kept company with the governor of the province, an intelligent man. The governor sent for Barnabas and Saul since he wanted to hear God's word. But the sorcerer opposed them, trying to steer the governor away from the faith. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, Saul, also known as Paul, glared at Bar-Jesus and said, You are a deceiver and trickster. Listen, the Lord's power is set against you. You will be blind for a while, unable even to see the daylight. At once, Bar-Jesus' eyes were darkened, and he began to grope about for someone to lead him around by the hand. When the governor saw what had taken place, he came to believe, for he was astonished by the teaching about the Lord. So Presbyterians have always talked about um, calling, that you are called to a particular ministry or a particular act of service. And, one of the, and that can be confusing. Like, how do you know you're called? How do you know... Um, you know, does God call you up on the phone and like you've been called and that's how you go? Um, and so we've always talked about calling to something, to ministry, to whether it's ordained ministry or lay ministry in the church or whether it's just ministry in your community, whatever it is that God's calling you to do. There's always two steps. There's the inner call. So that's the desire you get from the Holy Spirit inside of you, where the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And speaks to your soul and says, this is what, where you need to go and where you need to be and what you need to do. There's that step. And then there's always some form of outside confirmation. So mm -hmm. someone else will recognize that as well. Um, whether it's the church or whether it's a friend or a family member or, um, or, or who it is, there's always going to be an outside calling as well. So there's an inner call from God that says, go do this. And then there'll be an outer call some opportunity to go and do this and some affirmation from your community from your your faith support group so we don't ever talk about calling being something that you just figure out on your own it's always done in the context of people who care about you who know you who understand your strengths and your weaknesses um, who understand the gifts that you have to give and then say yeah you know what i think that call from god is right i think it's right and what you'll find is when you're doing what you're called to do, when you go where God sends you, when you take that step out in faith, that you're going to get an affirmation. There'll be some, um, there'll be some thing that happens, some sense, some purpose, something that affirms to you that this is what you're supposed to be doing. It whether it's because the ministry will take off and there'll be, you know, um, a real, a real fire for God in that ministry or whether it's because you have a sense you understand a sense of purpose and rightness and um, completeness with that but there'll always be something the other trick is there's always going to be some resistance and so um, when you are called by God to something then whatever you assign to be the opposite of God is going to fight that here it's a sorcerer, a, a person who tells stories, who is a false prophet. But it happens in our lives, too. There's always some form of resistance. There's somebody or something that gets in the way. And so we have to be careful that 
once we've received that inner call and we recognize the outer call from the community, we have to be aware there's going to be resistance. There's going to be something to overcome. But when we overcome that, that's when we know it's from God.